My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from group82university.com, basketballceo.com, and basketball's a love language for me. Make sure I got nothing on my face for those of y'all that are watching on all the visual platforms. How I became a Division I coach. Let's see. When I was at Mount Verde, man, my goal the entire time that I was there, and I kept telling Sutton, was to get to the NBA. And because I want to be a general manager of an NBA team, and I knew the easiest way for me to do that, well, not the easiest way, clearly, because I didn't get a chance to go down this pathway, but the plan that I had, the pathway I had seen, was to become a video intern with an NBA team, and that way you can rise up the ranks and eventually become a GM. My backup plan was to get inside of college basketball. So I got inside of college basketball when I became a GA at VCU. You want to know how I did that? Go listen to one of the previous episodes. I talked about that story in complete detail. Now that I'm at GC, GCU, now that I'm at VCU, the reason I say GCU is because when I got out of coaching, I became an admissions rep for GCU. So that's going to happen a lot. Every time I talk about VCU or GCU, I'm just in those swapping back, dropping them back and forth. When I was at VCU at the time, this was 2011, and VCU has what's called the Center for Sport Leadership. And this is one of the best graduate sport management programs in the world. And at that time, it was like massive and on fire. And Norwood Teague, who was the athletic director at VCU, was a basketball guy. And he hired Mike Ellis as a deputy AD at VCU, who was a massive basketball guy who was connected to Nike and to all these agencies and search firms. And he was one of the movers and shakers inside of college basketball. And they made Richmond, Virginia, Virginia Commonwealth University, the epicenter for college basketball coaches. And they had a conference that was sponsored by Nike that was called the Villa 7. And the Villa 7 was where you took the top assistant coaches in the country and you had a week-long conference where they got a chance to network with ADs. And I actually have notes from the Villa 7 conference. I think it was in 2011 or 2010, as y'all hear me turn through it. Actually, here we go, right here. Look, Villa 7 notes presented by the Center for Sport Leadership in Nike, May 11th through the 12th, 2011. So it wasn't a week. It was like a couple of days or whatnot. Um, it was put together by Brandon Rosenthal. Shout out to him. He used to do a lot of, like, note compilation at these conferences and stuff and for the young coaches at that time who were doing this through rising coaches elite which is founded by andy farrell and adam gordon and uh, trey meyer you know it was a great group for support staff members people that were gas or managers or video coordinators or ops guys who were trying to move up and brandon rosenthal he had an email list where he sent it out kind of through them so i ended up getting the notes through all of them and so i've reflected on those notes. I looked at those notes. It's a lot of good stuff that Norwood Teague was saying in there about how to get hired as a head coach, the things that he was saying to assistant coaches. So if y'all want me to email you those notes, go to basketballceo.com, join our email list, and I can send them out to you. So at this time, 2011, right after the Final Four, VCU is the hub of college basketball. They had just went to the Final Four. Villa 7's going on. All this attention, ESPN's constantly coming through. There's Shaka's like a coaching superstar now. And I'm in the midst of it. And it's enjoyable. Like, I'm getting to see what high-level college basketball is like when all the attention is on you. You got a hot program. They had just won the ESPY. They actually went to the ESPYs when I was there. Of course, me and Dwight and the other GAs, we couldn't go because we weren't a part of it. But they actually flew to L.A. and went to the ESPYs and won the ESPY. And Shaka had a trophy in his office. I used to pick it up like, damn, this is crazy. This is an actual ESPY. But, but to be a graduate assistant, you got to be in graduate school. For those of y'all that listened to the previous episode, I told you that I went and got my master's from the University of Central Florida. And that's how I was able to coach in Mount Verde Academy. So I already had a master's degree. So the only reason that I was in the center of sport leadership was because I wanted to coach basketball. And I knew that if you were a basketball GA at VCU, you had no choice but to be inside a CSL. So I had to go to class every week. <laughs> And over the summer, there was no class. It was a straight basketball. So we was just training. We was in the gym all day. It felt great. 
But when the school year started, you had to actually go to class. And we're the basketball GAs. It's five of us inside this graduate program with volleyball and ticket sales and marketing and soccer. And everybody kind of caters to us. We're allowed to miss a lot more class because we're the number one revenue generating sport at VCU. And people know what it is when you attach to the basketball team. But we still had to go to class. So it was annoying because I was tired of being a student. At this time, I think I was 26, maybe 27, and I already had a master's, bro. I'm here to coach. I don't want to do this. And that made me, every single day when I came into the VCU office, before I started doing any work with VCU, I would write down a list of names of coaches that I wanted to connect with and talk to that day. I used to do the same thing when I was at Mount Verde. So I made sure I wrote down some head coaches, some assistant coaches, ops guys, you know, people that worked inside of basketball, high school coaches, just in case, like, you know, first of all, to stay connected, but also if I want to go get another job somewhere else, like this is how you got to do it inside the realm of basketball. And one person on that list was Cliff Warren. And Cliff Warren was the head coach at Jacksonville University. And I used to talk to Cliff a lot. And the reason I knew Cliff is because when I was at Mount Verde, Jacksonville was right there. Mount Verde's in Orlando. And he used to always come down and recruit our guys. We had a few guys that were up there. And at that time, Jacksonville had, had a little bit of success. So I knew his staff pretty decently. I knew the assistant coaches. I knew the ops guy a little bit. They had, they had a video coordinator named Raul. I had worked, I think, the University of Florida camp with him. So I knew their staff a little bit. I knew what they had going on. And whenever they would come to Orlando, they would always stop by Mount Verde to practice but what it really was was like a secret recruiting for Cliff to see, you know, what was going on inside of Mount Verde. Coaches do that stuff all the time. But it was always cool because Coach Sutton and Cliff, they had a really good relationship. And one time when they came down and stopped the practice, I saw their director of basketball operations, Brian Gilbert, and he was just frantic, just all over the place. He was like, hey, hey, Alton, hey, man, uh, do y'all have anywhere I can wash clothes? I'm like, this is a Division I college basketball team. We're a high school team. I'm like, yeah, man, we got to wash and dry right here. Hey, man, can I need to wash these uniforms? Can I make sure I do it before practice is over? And I was like, yeah, you can do that, but our dryer is kind of old because, like, this is a high school and you might have to run it twice. Now, nah, once is good. All right. So he put it in there, wet, put it in the dryer, damp. And he, when he got it, he was like, man, is this going to get any more dry? And I'm like, nah, bro, I told you, like, it's an old dryer. We're a high school. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So you're like, all right, man. Put the stuff in the bag. And at that time, I could see, like, the worry in his face. It's like, what the hell is he so worried about? He grabbed the laundry. When he happened to grab the laundry, they were walking out because they had just got done practicing. They were walking back out to their bus. And I saw Brian tell Cliff something about the laundry. And then Cliff just kind of looked at him, you know, and shook his head and just kept walking off. So like, what the hell is going on? But, you know, I didn't – Realized I was paying attention to that at that time, but then I did realize it later on. And so I knew the staff. I talked to Cliff, and I kept telling Cliff what was going on at VCU from my perspective as a student. And I was like, bro, I can't do this anymore. Okay, I already got my master's. Get me out of here. And he said, well, you know, our director of ops position might be open because BG is Brian Gilbert. He might be going to be a high school coach. And this was October. And I was like, hey. I'm in. I'm interested. He was like, it's $22,000. Uh, we can get you an apartment across the street from campus. I said, I was already in when you told me that he was gone. The fact that I get to work on basketball full time was more than enough for me. So when that happens, when a coach informally tells you or offers you a position on his staff, what he does next is he has to get permission from the current head coach about you. So what Cliff did, because he had a relationship with Shaka, because Shaka used to be an assistant coach at Florida, Jacksonville's in Florida, so he knew each other. And he called Shaka about me and told him that he was looking to take me from being his GA to being an ops guy. And he also had me call BG. So I called BG and we're on the phone and like the excitement's just in my voice because I'm ready to be a Division I basketball coach. Like, this is my time to, like, get in. I'm finally going to be on a D1 staff. I'm finally going to have a salary job. I'm finally, after all this journey, my entire life, I'm going to be able to become a Division I basketball coach full 
time, a real one. And in BG's voice, I could hear the defeat. I could hear how tired he was. I could hear how he was ready to move on. And I thought that was more so just like because he was from Jacksonville. I think he had played there and he was on staff. So I thought it was more of that as opposed to like anything else. But, you know, BG was really gracious, told me everything, told me how everything was when I got there, what he was going to stop doing and what I need to pick up on, what he already took care of. He already took care of travel for the whole year, the buses, the hotels, all that. So BG left me in a very good spot. So shout out to him for that. Got off the phone with him. Uh, that night, I went to sleep, you know, not knowing what was going to be next for me in my life and my basketball career. Did I just trick it off or do I have an opportunity? The next day, I woke up from a text from Shaka. He was like, hey, Alden, can you come by my office? I was like, all right, cool. So I came by his office like an hour or two later. He said, close the door. And so uh, I closed the door, and he said, sit down. So I sat down. He said, uh, Cliff Warren call me about you. I was like, oh, really? Did he? He was like, you know he called me about you. He said, uh, he likes you, man. He likes you a lot. And they've had opportunities to do some good things the past couple of years. I like Cliff. I knew him when I was in Florida. Jacksonville's been good the past couple of seasons. So, you know, my opinion, I think you should take this job. You've done a phenomenal job here. Um, you want to stay here? Cool. He said, but if this was the spring, I would tell you to take this position. And, you know, I was going to do what I want to do anyway. He said that when he told me that as well. But just the fact that he validated it and put his stamp on it, you know, because you don't want to leave anywhere on bad terms or whatnot, that made me feel a lot better. So, you know, I knew I had Shaka support. Um, clearly, I had Cliff Warren support. If you get the head coaches support at both them programs, you're going to get the, the assistant coaches and everybody else's support around that. Then at that point, it was just moving, you know, and saying goodbye to all the players. I remember Eric Maynard was there. He was, uh, this was during a lockout, if I'm not mistaken. I think the NBA was about to go into a lockout. So, E. Maynard was still hanging around Richmond and playing pickup and stuff. And uh, he told me congratulations. I think uh, he even retweeted something I put on Twitter. I can't remember. This was a while ago. But – it was, it was such a good feeling to be a Division One basketball coach, finally. And I had to send something down to Jacksonville, think birth certificate or something that, like that. And I get down there, and when I get down there, uh, BG had left me some gear, like a bunch of gear. That's something that you do in coaching. You know, once you move on from a position, you leave the gear there. Uh, BG had left, like, a few notes for things that I needed to do. And then that was it. And then once I got down there, uh, I found out that day, that's when Jacksonville University actually posted the job. I was already there. And this is how this works in college sports. If a job is posted on the website, everything's already happened. Think about all the things I just told you. Think about all the steps that had to happen. Think about all the phone calls, all the writing off. I'd already moved. I was already there in the office. And they posted the job. And when they posted, they closed it like a couple of days later. But legally, they have to put it up there. So if you think that you're going to get a Division I head coaching job or assistant coaching job or op job because of just you're good and you're a great coach, that's not how it works. It 100% comes down to relationships. If you see something online, it's probably already gone. Unless it's something like, you know, USC's AD because they hired somebody that was crazy and they had to get rid of him, you know. Or even if you look back at, like, what Norwood Teague and Mike Ellis, like those two dudes who ran the VCU program, they end up going on to Minnesota. You look at the stuff that they got in trouble for. So when the AD position in Minnesota opened up, clearly everybody knew, so it became a national search. So if there's some national search thing, yes. But if it's something where one guy is leaving for another position, if you think you're going to get that job by applying on some website, it's just not going to happen. you got to have the relationships. you got to have the connections. And you got to have a brand where people know that you know what you're talking about. And that's the main reason I started BasketballCEO.com to teach coaches and support staff guys and players and parents and everybody how to brand yourself in the world of basketball because it's a much different thing than branding yourself in any, in any other business. It's way different acquiring these opportunities than it is if you were trying to apply for something through LinkedIn
Indian or Indeed or Career Builder or wherever y'all go now. So if you're interested in knowing more about the details of stuff like this, the behind the scenes of the business of basketball, make sure you click like on everything we do. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you save. Make sure you watch all these episodes, listen to all these episodes all the way to the end, and make sure you get on our email list. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true. Oh, 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 oh.